Hello, photographers. My name is Spiros Henny Addison. and this is where I answer your photography questions, and we learn about photography together. And this is my hands-on review of the Olympus OMD EM52 mirrorless camera. And the OMD EM52 is the latest camera in Olympus's OMD line, and it was released in February of 2015. And as recording this video, the EM52 retails for $899 for the body, or $1,698 with the 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8 Pro lens. Now the EM52 is packed with features, so let's run them down. It has a 16 megapixel 4 3rd sensor with no anti-aliasing filter. It uses the TruePic 7 image processor. On the back, it has a 3 inch fully articulating 1,037,000 dot touchscreen. It weighs 469 grams or 1.03 pounds. It has a single memory card slot for SD cards. It is weather sealed, it has Wi-Fi, an electronic viewfinder with 2.36 million dots and 100% coverage with a 1.4 times magnification, 5-axis in-body image stabilization, an ISO range of 200 to 6400 which is expandable to a low of 50 and a high of 25,600, a shutter speed of 60 seconds at the longest end and 1 8,000th of a second at the shortest end. You can shoot up to 10 frames per second when shooting in JPEG mode with image stabilization turned off, but this camera has a pretty awful buffer, which I'll discuss later on. Now there are other features including a built-in HDR mode, the new 40 megapixel high resolution mode, a time-lapse mode with in-body time-lapse movie creation, live composition mode, and a whole bunch more stuff. So this little camera has a pretty amazing feature set for photos. And traditionally, Olympus has not been super strong on the video front especially in terms of mirrorless cameras. When you look at Panasonic and Sony, who have been the real standouts with video, while well, Olympus and Fuji have kind of lagged behind. On the EM52, though, we can see that Olympus is starting to take video a bit more seriously. And we're going to talk about the video specs in more depth when we get to that section of the review. So for now, let's start with the body and design of this camera. This camera is rock solid, and it's also a really good looking camera. And of course, how a camera looks really has nothing to do with its performance performance as an image making device, but we'd all be lying if we said that the looks of the camera didn't matter at least a little bit. And I really like the way this camera looks. It looks great, but here's something I've got a problem with. This charger, th this is crap. I mean, look at this thing. You've got this tiny, beautifully designed mirrorless camera, and then we have this shit charger with like this ridiculous six foot cord. Now, to be fair, Olympus isn't the only company that's guilty of this. I've seen the same crap chargers from Fuji, Pentax, and other camera manufacturers. It's something I wanted to point out because I think it's really dumb. So to get back to the body, this body is a magnesium alloy body that is dust, splash, and freeze proof down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. As I mentioned, the body weighs just barely over a pound and as a mirrorless micro four thirds camera it's a nice compact well-designed little camera despite the size of it though it is very easy to hold and operate and this camera is loaded with customizability on the front of the camera you've got a nicely sized finger grip that makes holding the camera very comfortable and you've got a customizable function button a pc sync port and of course the lens release button on the top we have the mode dial and i love this mode dial because it has a plunge lock switch so you can easily click this plunger button down and lock the mode dial and then unlock it and change it very easily and in my opinion this is how all physical dials with locks should operate it just makes it so much easier to use the camera and the dial then next to the mode dial we have the power switch we have the flash hot shoe and the EM52 comes with an accessory flash because it doesn't have a pop-up and this accessory flash is slightly less crappy than the built-in pop-up since you can actually tilt and rotate the flash head. To the right of the hot shoe is a cornucopia of controls which seems overwhelming at first glance but it's actually very intuitive and easy to use these controls. What we have here is four customizable buttons, two control dials, and the shutter button. The function four button which is labeled HDR and that is its default feature. Feature. It's to turn the HDR mode on and off. The function three button's default is to activate the super control panel, which is like the quick menu on a Canon camera. The function two button's default is that it is a multi-function button that allows you to access the shadow highlight control, the color control, the aspect ratio control, and the magnify image option for the electronic viewfinder. And then we have the record button, and these all can be customized to whatever feature you want them to activate for you. Now, by default, when in manual mode, 
mode, the front shutter dial controls the shutter speed and the rear dial controls the aperture. And then on the back you have the fully articulated LCD touchscreen with the electronic viewfinder, the diopter, another customizable function button, a customizable lever switch, and the standard menu info, OK buttons, image review button, delete button, and directional pad. And if you have the 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8 Pro lens, you have one more customizable function button right on the barrel of the lens. So all in all, this camera has seven customizable buttons, one customizable lever switch, and on top of that, you can customize how the control dials on the camera actually work. With the control dials, you can change which one of them control the aperture and the shutter speed and which direction you spin the dial to customize how you change your aperture and shutter speed when you change them. All in all, this is an amazingly designed camera. And I don't know if there is another camera out there that offers as much customization as this one does. This camera is really designed to mold itself to your shooting style, which I think is just wonderful. Now, the biggest drawback to the design of this camera is that the control dials are very easy easy to move accidentally, which makes it too easy, in my opinion, to change your aperture and shutter speed without realizing it. If you just brush the button, it can change. Despite the issue of the dials, I love the design of this camera. I love how it feels in my hands, and I love how intuitive it is to work with. Shooting with this thing is delightful, but how are the actual images that you get out of it? Lots of people still worry about micro four-thirds cameras because of the smaller four-third sensor in them. In the world of sensor sizes, the four-third sensor is the APS-C sensor little brother. So this is a smaller sensor with a two times crop factor and to some people that means poor low light performance and an inability to get shallow depth of field and questionable image quality. Just forget those assumptions because it's not really true. For instance, the size of the sensor has way less to do with low light performance than the design of that sensor and the technology of the day. And in the case of the sensor in the EM52, it is a very good sensor with great performance. As I mentioned earlier, it's 16 megapixels and the camera has an ISO range of 200 to 6400. My initial impression of the images that I've been getting out of this camera is delight. I have been thrilled with how they look. Here's an example. This is one of the first photos I took with this camera, and it is great. I've got super shallow depth of field at f2.8, beautiful colors, and really sharp detail where there's focus. And here's another one with some very fine details to show the sharpness, which of course is as much about the 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8 Pro lens as it is about the camera itself. And as you can see, the details are fantastic. And this camera is no slouch in ISO performance either. Yes, being a four-third sensor, it's ISO range is a bit more limited than some cameras, and you already saw a couple of shots at ISO 200, so we'll skip right to ISO 6400 and see how it looks. And it's not bad at all. In fact, I think it's pretty great. Is it noisy? Certainly. At ISO 6400, it should be noisy, but in my opinion, that noise is not bad at all. And yes, you lose some of the fine details, but the noise is quite pleasing, and the overall quality, in my opinion, is very nice. You can also expand the ISO to 12,800 and and 25,600. And even at 12,800, as you can see here, it's really not that bad. The noise is significantly more pronounced, but it's hardly terrible. And if I had to, I would not hesitate to shoot this camera at 12,800. But 25,600 is another story. As you can see, there's some pretty serious banding and image degradation, which is to be expected from an expanded ISO setting. So overall, in my opinion, the image quality from the EM52 is fantastic. And I don't find the 16 megapixel to be a limiting factor. I've successfully printed beautiful 20 inch by 30 inch prints from an eight megapixel image. So for my purposes, 16 megapixels is just fine. Certainly if you were shooting billboards or other work that required enormous prints, 16 megapixels could be limiting. But that brings us to the 40 megapixel high resolution mode that is new to the EM52. And this mode is pretty cool. It definitely has its limits, but despite that, it's a very cool option to have on the camera. What this mode does is is use the sensor stabilization system to take eight photos in a row, shifting the image sensor a little bit for each photo, and then joining them all together to create a single 40 megapixel photo. And in my testing, this is pretty fantastic. Now, you've got to use this under the right conditions because this is a sequence of eight photos stitched together. So you're going to want to be using a tripod and you're going to want to be shooting a still subject. Moving subjects will not work out. And I tested this in two different scenarios. In the studio, 
studio and in the field. In the studio, the results were fantastic. This is the studio test right here, and I didn't shoot this photo with flash, but if you're shooting a still subject, you can use flash. And one of the cool things is that you can set the charge time between each of the eight shots to give your lights a chance to recharge so they were fire for each of the eight photos it takes to compose the 40 megapixel shot. And as you can see by this photo here, the results are really fantastic. I am really impressed with this. And here it is at 100%. And really, I, I, I cannot get over how great this is, especially when you consider the size. The 16 megapixel images that you natively get from the EM52 will give you 10 inch by 15 inch prints. With the 40 megapixel high resolution mode, the image will print without any upscaling at 16 by 24 inches. What's even better is that Olympus is already working to make this mode usable while hand holding the camera. And what really excites me is the potential that someday we might be able to use this while shooting portraits. One of the very cool things that Olympus has on this camera and most of their cameras is the in-body image stabilization. Not only does it allow for the 40 megapixel high resolution mode, but it gives you five axis image stabilization with any lens you put on the camera, including old manual lenses. The OMD EM52 claims up to five stops of image stabilization, meaning that with a 50 millimeter lens, you are supposed to be able to shoot with a one second shutter speed and still get a sharp photo. In my testing, I was only able to shoot at a half a second and still get a sharp photo with the image stabilization. And that was with the lens zoom to 40 millimeters. I was not able to get a sharp photo with a one second shutter speed. But even though I couldn't get a sharp handheld shot at one second, you can definitely see the difference the stabilization makes. And to be fair, I may not have the steadiest hands. Other people using this camera have claimed that they can shoot at one second. So the effectiveness of this is going to depend upon how you hold your camera. Okay, let's take a look at the autofocus performance. The EM52 has on sensor contrast detect autofocus with 81 focus points that cover almost the entire frame. Choosing a focus point is nice and easy. All you gotta do is hit one of the directional pad buttons and it brings up the selector grid and you can then use the directional pad or the two control dials to select your desired focus point. And when you use the control dials, the front dial moves the focus point horizontally and the back dial moves it vertically along the grid. And using this camera, I found the focus to be fast and accurate with the tendency to miss the focus target. The upside to when it missed is that it missed spectacularly, so when you look through the viewfinder, it was perfectly obvious that you needed to achieve proper focus again. The tracking focus on this camera was pretty average, which is not bad when you consider that one of the challenges mirrorless cameras have been facing is the general superiority of DSLR focusing systems with their dedicated autofocus modules. So when I say that it was pretty average, that's praise and not really a criticism because generally speaking, the EM52 performed as well as all of the DSLRs I've ever shot with and tested when it comes to tracking a moving subject. Here's an example sequence made doubly more difficult by being a terribly lit situation with a moving subject in a slowish shutter speed of about 1 50th of a second and the camera handled it quite admirably. So overall, I was very happy with the autofocus performance, both in good lighting and in low light situations. I found it reliable to use. And since we're talking about focus, I also want to take a moment to mention the focus peaking that you can use to assist manual focusing with any lens you put on the camera. And then in the viewfinder or on the back screen, as you rotate the focus ring of the lens, you'll see the area of the scene highlighted with the peaking color to indicate that that is in focus. And in short, it is fantastic. And I was immediately shooting in manual focus in all kinds of lighting situations, getting great photos with manual focus. Now, being a mirrorless camera, before we move on, I need to talk about the electronic viewfinder. It has a 1.48 times magnification, which is nice and big and beautiful, and it's fast. There is a tiny bit of lag in the viewfinder when you move the camera, especially if you're whipping the camera around really fast. But for normal users, it is not a problem at all. I love I love this electronic viewfinder. I love everything about it. It's big, it allows you to see in the dark, it helps you manually focus like a champ, it gives you all of the information you want to see when you're looking in the viewfinder, and I flat out have no complaints about it. I think it is great. I love using it. Now I want to address the burst rate that I mentioned earlier. The EM52 is rated for up to 10 frames per second when shooting JPEGs without stabilization. And generally speaking, that's a pretty good frame rate, beating out a lot of modern cameras, especially your entry 
entry-level DSLRs. However, that frame rate is only so helpful when you have a pathetic buffer like you do on this camera, which can only hold about 15 JPEGs before it slows down the frame rate. So I definitely would not recommend this camera for serious sports shooting because it's really not going to hold up for you. Okay, we're nearing the finish line here. The EM5 II is a camera where you can see that Olympus is starting to take video a bit more seriously. Let's look at the specs. You can shoot in full 1080p HD and 720p HD video, both capable of recording at 60, 50, 30, 25, and 24 frames per second. You have full five axis image stabilization available while shooting video. It has a stereo mic and a stereo mic input with manual levels control. You can shoot in full manual and the shutter speed will be locked to prevent you from going lower than the frame rate, but other than that you have full manual control of your video. So first of all the image stabilization. 5 axis image stabilization while shooting video is amazing. And as you can see here in this video where I walked across my yard, the stabilization is fantastic. Of course it's not 100% perfectly smooth, but it is nothing short of amazing, especially when you compare it to the same video shot without stabilization. And as to the quality of the video and the sound in general, I'm going to let you judge for yourself because I'm recording this entire section of the video with the EM5 II, with all of the sound going through the EM5's external mic jack using my regular mic. So finally, I want to talk about a few other things that don't categorize nicely. First is the built-in Wi-Fi. In short, I think it's great. And in fact, I think what Olympus did was pretty brilliant because when you activate the Wi-Fi on the camera, you get this QR code on the LCD screen with instructions to scan the code with the free Olympus Share app. When you scan that code, it automatically configures the phone to be able to connect to the camera's Wi-Fi network. So you don't have to go onto the phone and enter all the stuff yourself. And then on the iPhone, you're prompted to accept the network credentials. And once you do that, all you need to do is go to your Wi-Fi settings and pick the EM52's Wi-Fi network. So I went through this setup and it worked flawlessly. After setting up the Wi-Fi network and connecting to it, I launched the app and I was immediately able to browse and download photos, control the camera remotely, geotag photos using the phone's GPS data, and a whole lot more. When using the app to control the camera, you can set the shooting mode to anything from full manual all the way to movie mode and back again. And while in full manual mode, you have control over aperture, ISO, shutter speed, white balance and the drive mode and you can focus by touching the live preview of the image on the phone screen and of course you have the shutter button to control and actually take the photo when you switch the app to video mode you have control of your aperture your shutter speed but oddly enough you cannot change the ISO instead it inherits the ISO setting from whatever it was last set to in manual mode and this is kind of odd because you can change the ISO by going back into manual mode and changing it to whatever you want it to be and then going back into movie mode, but for some reason you can't change it directly while in movie mode. For me, the best feature of the app was the live bald mode. When I tried the live bald mode out, I was super excited. So live bald mode is a variation on regular bald mode. And in bald mode, when you hold down your shutter button, it takes a picture for as long as you hold the button down. And when you use the app and the live bald mode, you hold the shutter button on the app and you watch the picture as it's being exposed, which means that you can see the result of the photo as it's happening. And as soon as you like the results, you let go of the button and it stops taking the picture, which I think is awesome. So all in all, the app and the integration with the camera is beautifully done and I think it's a really strong feature of this camera. All in all, I think the OMD EM52 by Olympus is a fantastic camera, so much so that I am actually going to buy one. It has great low light performance, it produces beautiful images, it has a ton of customizability to it, it's got a beautiful electronic viewfinder, it's got great 5-axis image stabilization. It's got a very competent, if not super exciting, video mode. It's got this great app with Wi-Fi that works really, really well. It's small, it's light, it's just a beautiful camera package. And really, if you are looking at this camera, I say don't waste any more time. Just go buy the damn thing because it's really amazing. Now, the one person I would say shouldn't buy this camera is the person shooting sports. As I mentioned earlier, the burst mode on this camera is good on paper at 10 frames per second. But with that crappy, crappy, crappy buffer, it's really not very useful. So if you're a sports shooter, pass on the OMD EM5 II. But if you shoot anything else, get this camera. It is amazing. I highly recommend it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of the OMD 
E M5 II mirrorless camera. If you have any questions about this camera, leave them down in the comments. And then do me a favor. Would you like this video and subscribe to my channel? If you really like this video, maybe share it with your friends. But the most important thing you need to do is get out there and take some damn photos. I'll see you guys on Thursday.